Welcome to worship at Atlanta First United Methodist Church here in downtown Atlanta. I'm Jasmine Smothers. I'm the lead pastor. It is my joy and privilege to welcome you to worship this evening. Whether you were worshiping in the sanctuary or online, we are so glad to welcome you to this community of faith tonight as we celebrate Holy Thursday. Some know it as Monday Thursday, and Monday comes from a Latin word, which means commandment. And so tonight, we celebrate the commandment to love God and our neighbor, and we celebrate the sacrifice of Jesus Christ for us through the Lord's Supper and the Passion. Here at Atlanta First, we exist to worship God, to serve people, to grow together, and to engage the city of Atlanta and beyond. And you'll find many ways to do that in your bulletin. You are also invited to worship tomorrow, Good Friday, the day that we remember the crucifixion and death of Jesus Christ. That worship service is at 12 noon tomorrow here in the sanctuary and online. And we will ring the bell from 1 to 3. It will be told once a minute for the three hours that Jesus hung on the cross. All are welcome to participate in that remembrance as well. On Saturday, we'll be silent. It's called Silent Saturday, the day that Jesus laid in the tomb on our behalf. And on Sunday, we will worship together at 8 a.m. for sunrise and at 10 a.m. for celebration worship. Whether it is raining or not, uh, we will have the sunrise service. If it is raining, we will have it here inside the sanctuary. If not, it will be in the garden. So let us turn our hearts and minds to worship this evening. There, is, there are offering baskets available at each of the doors, and you can also give online through our, our secure online giving or cash app um, or text to give if you are worshiping online. But we ask that you will use this time to remember to contemplate and to take in the holiness of this worship service tonight. We will exit at the end in silence. Friends, the Passover table is set. Jesus humbles himself as a servant and even though betrayal and denial are close at hand, watch and pray that you may be found faithful during the time of trial. Let us share in our call to worship together. Remember the saving love of God. For Christ claims us as his own. Gratitude. Come to the table of grace. Eat the bread of life. And drink from the cup of salvation. Ponder the depth of Christ's love as he washes the feet of his disciples. Let us pray together. Your love calls us here, gracious one, calling us to dine with you and to be instruments of your love. Gather us in Jesus' name that we may offer him the full measure of our devotion. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able, in body or in spirit, as we sing together our opening hymn, Down at the Cross. You will find the words on the screen, on the screens.
Tonight you will hear the words of Jesus from the Passover meal through the passion and death of Jesus Christ. So hear now these words from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 17 through 29. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, updated version, and all of the readings that you will hear tonight come from that translation of the Bible. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover. He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the twelve disciples. And while they were eating, he said, Truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed. And began to say to him one after another, Surely not I, Lord. He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him. But woe! to that one by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, 
You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine Until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God, amen. From the beginning of all creation, God's word was love. The love has been lavished upon you, not because you did anything to earn it, but because it is God's great gift to you. Live in that love and bring peace to others. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. From earth you bring forth bread and create the fruit of the wine, the vine. You formed us in your image, delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and gave us grapes as evidence of the promised land. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. When we turned aside from your way and abused your gifts, you gave us in him your crowning gift, emptying himself that our joy might be full. He fed the hungry, healed the sick, 
ate with scorned and forgotten, washed his disciples' feet, and gave a holy meal as a pledge of his abiding presence. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread. He gave thanks to you, O oh God. He broke the bread. Gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim this mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now let us pray with boldness the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Whoever you are and wherever you are in your faith journey, you are invited to this Christ table. We remember tonight the Passover, the ordinary celebration, the ordinary meal that Jesus had with his disciples, and we remember through remaking the Passover tonight. But then it took a twist. And Jesus said, this bread, it's my body. And this blood, it's my blood. This juice, it's my blood shed for you. So as you come tonight, know that this is not Atlanta First Table. This is not the United Methodist Church's table. This is not even Pastor Jasmine's table. It is Christ's table. And all who desire to come are welcome.
Please follow the direction of the ushers. All of the elements are gluten-free elements. You, you will come and kneel at the altar rail. You will be given one of these nifty elements by our servers who will come now. And then I will give you directions about taking and eating and taking and drinking. The table is set. Won't you come? Helen, this is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the body of Christ broken for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we come tonight, remember the sacrifice of Jesus just for you. Take and eat. When I fall. Jesus said something really interesting to the disciples when he gave them the juice. He said, this is for the forgiveness of your sins so that you can go and forgive others of their sins. So take and drink. Know that you are forgiven so that you might forgive someone else. Now rise and go in peace with the assurance that Jesus loves you and did it just for you. Everybody who wishes to be served been served. Have mercy on me. As we continue in worship this evening, the service will proceed as is printed and as will appear on the screens. Our theme this year for the church has been Grow With God. And so tonight we are grateful that some of our grow group leaders, our small group leaders, are here to lead us through the passion of Christ tonight. You are invited after the conclusion of the service, you are invited to share your gifts with God through the free will offering, through the baskets that are available at the doors or through our online mechanisms. 
And um, please remember that we will exit the sanctuary in silence at the end of the worship service. Let us turn now to the passion of Jesus Christ. Alone in the garden, Matthew 26, 30 through 46. When they had sung the hymn, they went out of the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, you will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even if all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Surely I tell you this very night, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, my soul is deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he drew it, threw himself on the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, so could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Now the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. Look, my betrayer is at hand.
couldn't hear nobody pray. Couldn't hear nobody pray. I couldn't hear nobody pray. Betrayed and denied, Matthew 26, 47 through 75. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the 12 arrived. With him was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man, arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, greetings rabbi and kissed him. Jesus said to him, friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly, one of those with Jesus put his hand on his sword, drew it and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will die by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a rebel? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets may be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, this fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, you have said so. But I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, he has blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What do you think? They answered, he deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, prophesy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A female servant came to him and said, you also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before all of them, saying, I do not know who you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another female servant saw him, and she said to the bystanders, this man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath. I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. 
Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Crucifixion, Matthew 27, 1 to 2, 11 to 44. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, you say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave them no answer, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they had gathered, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release for you? 
Jesus Barabbas, or Jesus, who was called the Messiah. For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, let him be crucified. Then he asked, why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he released Barabbas to them for them, and after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his hand and knelt before him and mocked him saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on his head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from Cyrene named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And then, and when they crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders were mocking him saying, he saved others. He cannot save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The rebels who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way.
time on. Think about Jesus Every time on. Think about Jesus Every time Death on the Cross, Matthew 27, verses 45 through 54. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait. Let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks were split, tombs were also opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, he came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus 
saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly, this man was God's son. Should be. 
Barrier in the tomb, Matthew 27, 57 to 66. When it was evening, there came a rich man from a real mafia named Joseph, who also was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked him for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a gray stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after a day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, rem re remember that, remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, he, his disciples may go and steal him away and tear the people. He has been raised from the dead, and the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by selling the stone. Him in the side. 
Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord?
But even in the dark and desolate silence of the tomb, God has not deserted us. Even now we have the hope that was promised by the prophets and fulfilled in that Christmas manger in Bethlehem. The Christ candle that was the center of our Advent wreath reminds us that in all times and in all circumstances, when it seems we have been abandoned and forsaken even by God, we are not alone. God is with us. Amen. Amen.